boyfriend likes my girlfriend and I cry in vain. Please help me in my agony. Dear Jane, dear Jane, dear Jane. Agony. Tell me, being an agony aunt, your own personal problems are national news. I read in Nigel Hamster's column that you and your psychiatrist husband are not speaking. Is that true? I don't know. I'll ask him. <laughs> Let me ask you, how does a marriage mender mend her own marriage? And when your husband left you, who did you turn to for advice? I just sat right down and wrote myself a letter. You must find it difficult to admit you've got problems. Actually, I believe we both share the same problem at this moment. Really? <laughs> What's that? Your floor manager's waving frantically at you over there, for which I'm extremely grateful. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. The semi-divorced but wholly delightful Jane Lucas. <laughs> Join us again after the See the bags under my eyes? Yes. Never mind, Jane. You look much better on the radio. Yeah, so I've heard. Oh, I must have been mad to think of going on that show. I might have known he'd bring up Lawrence's leaving me. I mean, how am I supposed to forget it when everyone keeps reminding me? Come on, snap out of it, Jane. Yeah, I know. I'm silly. I'm being silly. It's just I, I keep thinking of Lawrence having a great time with a different girl each night and me sitting at home with two gay boys. Nothing personal. No. <laughs> Here, try one of my new health cigarettes, Jane. They're packed with vitamin B37. Very good for your sex drive. Oh, that's all I need. I've got the answer. What was the question? The question of cheering you up. Why don't you become gay and forget about men altogether? Didn't work for you, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Jokes already. Look, you don't have to be an inhibited hetero all your dreary little life. If your husband can break out, then you can come out. Find yourself a nice Jewish girl. Settle down. <laughs> I did want to go to summer camp with Valerie Levy. Ah. Nah, nothing came of it. <laughs> no, boys, I'm afraid I still think it's great to be straight. Oh, well, have it your own way. I used to. <laughs> We're only trying to help. Look, if you really want to help me, stop trying to help me. Wouldn't you like us to do anything? No, just lay off. You're my dearest friends in the world, and I love every gay inch of you, but I have to be what I am, or rather what I'd like to be, and that's happily married to that... Baboon Lawrence. Oh, for God's sake, stop going on about Lawrence just for ten seconds. Well, I know it's a perversion, but I still love him. Isn't there any other perversion that appeals to you? <laughs> yeah. Come to think of it, I'd quite like to be a corgi in the royal household. <laughs> Must be heaven to have the Queen of England rub the back of your neck every morning. <laughs> Wonder who's rubbing the back of Lawrence's neck right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ever since I left Jane, I've been desperate to retrieve my manhood. Take a different girl out every night. But no sooner do I get them back to my room at the Playboy Club than I start to worry. And then I become... I become basically... Impotent. Wrong <laughs> function. <laughs> the room is costing me a fortune. Can't you suggest a cure? Here. Pull this through your ears. What is it? <laughs> Mental floss. <laughs> Do you, do you think that it's just a mechanical problem? You are the classic menopausal male. Menopausal? You see the world as a giant bedroom full of demanding females. The simple truth is that midlife crises are scared you soft. Oh, but look here. I'm too young for middle-age anxiety, aren't I? Look here. There are more important things in life than sex. Name one. Money. <laughs> you'll realise when you get my bill. The question is, what should I do? I've got a better question. How do you keep a moron in suspense? How? I'll tell you on Friday. Your time is up. <laughs> Don't stare, Emily. It's rude. <laughs> Slow down, Jane. We all know what you've been going through since Lawrence left you. I don't know what you mean. The answers you've been writing to people's problems are very revealing. Listen to what you dictated to me yesterday. Dear Deserted of Deptford, you poor soul, do I know what you're going through. 
It's terrible when your loved one runs off and leaves you. What am I going to do? My life is falling apart. Can you help me? <laughs> Please write soon. I really don't believe I wrote that. Jane, this has got to stop. It's driving me crazy. You're not the boss I agreed to work for. Now, I have got the solution to all your problems. Problems? Who's got problems? Here is the phone number of a sexual freedom group. They're a really swinging club for singles. No, no. Val, absolutely not. Nonsense. I've got for the circulation. And you'll be circulating a lot with this group, let me tell you. Ah. Of course, you'll have to go through a personal interview in your own home. And it wouldn't hurt if you stopped dressing like Bob Dylan. We're both trying to make a comeback. And try to dress with a little more sophistication. Right, I will wear thigh-length PVC boots and carry a whip. That's the idea. <laughs> Jane Lucas's helpline, how can I... What? She's on her way up. Oh, calamity, Jane. You have a visitor. Lawrence, the guard dog of public morality. The grand dame of agony on... Not... Yes! Mm. Have I still time to kill myself? No! I hope I'm not disturbing you, Jane. <laughs> not at all, Emily. Dear, dear, Jane. Dear, dear, Emily. <laughs> I think I'll leave you two lovebirds alone. <laughs> Excuse me. If your mind is as in much chaos as this room, I didn't arrive a moment too soon. Oh, I hardly recognise my old office anymore. You know what I always say? Yes. Dirty house, dirty mind. Now, I used to have this lamp over here. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> You've been crying all over this tabletop, haven't you? Dear me, that'll have to be rewaxed. <laughs> yes, I, mean, I, mean, I don't want to be rude. No, of course you don't. You just can't help yourself. <laughs> well, oh, I understand. Now then. <clears throat> <laughs> I came to say that I thought that whole moral striptease on television about your marriage breaking up was disgusting. It made me quite cross. I would never have stooped so low. You were never asked, Emily, and that makes you even crosser. <laughs> but I will say this. My national see no evil, hear no evil association and I agree that you're doing... <laughs> you're doing a wonderful job on your radio show. Really? Mmm... You make sex sound so terribly dull. <laughs> and that has to be a good thing. That is because you are a prude. Oh, if you're going to say I'm a prude, you're quite wrong. Oh, good heavens, no. You have sex organs. I have sex organs. <laughs> I've seen them. <laughs> Time, Emily. So is one's pancreas. <laughs> so that it is not the subject for endless public discussion. Oh, you're absolutely right, it isn't. The important thing is that you do your job and do it well. It's not just a stepping stone to fame. Being an agony aunt is a public service. Like a 49 bus. <laughs> Commitment, Jane. You must be committed. That makes two of us. Oh, look, my photograph's fallen down. Oh, dear me. Well, that's better. Depends which way you look at it, Emily. Now, Jane, Jane, temper, temper. Do try to live up to the standards. Whose standards? There's only one set of standards, the right ones. And I brought you a copy. And always remember, Jane, the truth, the way, and the light. And there, Emily, is the door, the hall, and the lift. <laughs> Very well, I'm going. Oh, there's just one more thing. What? You'll find that plant does much better on the windowsill. <laughs> well, thanks, Ray, and good luck with your experiment in polygamy. You're really going to need it. Happen in Radio 242. The lines are open, and our next caller for the irresistible Jane Lucas is Claire. Hello, Claire. You're on the radio. Oh, that makes two of us. Pardon? This is Jane, Claire. Go ahead. Well, I've got this problem. Boys always seem to think I'm a bit, well, a bit of a goer. <laughs> is it your manner? I mean, are you louder and brasher when boys are around? Oh, no, I don't think so. I'm quite shy, really. If I, <laughs> I think it's maybe something about my figure. I've got this rather large, I mean, I'm sort of big round the top. 
I'm a circus fan myself and I love a big top. That is because you are a clown, Andy. Now, some figures can be great when you're 35 and hell when you're 15. Right, Claire? Yeah. Okay, now, this is radio and I can't see you, so you have to tell me. How, how tall are you? Only five feet and half an inch. And the dreaded measurement? 38 inches to see Heavy. <laughs> without good posture and a wonderful sense of humour. Now, don't let anyone frighten you into a reduction operation because you may not have finished growing in all sorts of directions, but you do need someone to help you feel better about yourself. Now, never fear, that person is close at hand. You mean you? No, dear, I mean you. Now, I know it's a lot to ask, but you've got to make the jokes first. Oh, I see. <laughs> but will anyone ever take me seriously? Well, they will if you don't. Oh, I feel so much better now I've got back off my chest. <laughs> Very well done. Oh, thanks, Jane. I feel so much better. You're welcome. And if you ever need uplifting again, Claire, just uh, call the hassle line. I'll give you my private appointment number. Oh, thank you, Dr. Feelgood. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, now, Possums. The delectable Jane Lucas must trot along back to where she comes from. She'll be back next week at the same time. In the meantime, let's get back to the boogie. And I have a card here from Shirley of Edmonton, who wants to hear anything by Bach. Brahms or Beethoven. So, Shirley, just for you, it's the Rolling Stones. <laughs> yeah, all right. <coughs> what are you rushing off for? You're not scared of me, are you? Well, I'm practically a single woman and you're practically a man. Look, babe, I'm not interested in your body. No? No, far too much in love with my own. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's good to see you smile again. Listen, why can't we be friends? Well, the trouble is, you like your friends horizontal, and I can't take that lying down. Oh, nice attempt at humor. Just remember what the Maharishi said. Love is like bread. It should be made fresh every day. Boy, I really needed that. Consolation of the lovelorn. Food and television. You'll never leave me, will you? Mm? Hello? Don't sound so cheerful. It's only your mother. Lawrence hasn't rung. Not a squeak in three weeks. How are you, Ma? Terrible, but not so terrible as you on that television show. Oh, my mother, the television critic already. Well, somebody's got to tell you the truth. Jane, how could you let a nudnik like that get the better of you? <laughs> <laughs> humiliation, I could have died. That was rough for you, was it, Ma? I don't know how I survived. You can turn to me, but who do I have to turn to? <laughs> Next time you go on television, I want you to make it absolutely clear that your mother brought you up properly and none of this terrible business was my fault. OK, OK, Ma. If Lawrence and I get back together, I will take out a full page in the Jewish Chronicle thanking you and wishing you mazel tov. Very nice for your mother. Now, listen, Jane, darling, be honest with me. Have you eaten anything since he left? Yeah, I've managed a few morsels. I think I'd better come to dinner before you starve to death. When? Friday, 8 o'clock. I'll be there. So will I. <laughs> Yes. Greetings. We are here to offer you total liberation. Oh, thank you so much, but I don't need any. That's not what Miss Valdon believes. Oh, Lord. Did my evangelistic secretary send you here? I'll swing for that girl. Exactly. Here's our card. <laughs> the Sexual Unification Church? Oh, thank you so much, but I'm Jewish, actually. Our church recognizes all religions and creeds. We minister to all your most intimate needs. Intimate needs? I'd <laughs> love to hear more. Thank you for coming. I'm closing the door. I'm Mr. Walker, the chair. Nine, Mrs. Mansfield. The vice vice chairman. chairman, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice sitting room. Perfect for medium-sized sexual gatherings. Do you mean orgies? <laughs> Please, Mrs. Lucas, we prefer to call them sexual salvation services. <laughs> 
You can find total fulfillment. It can be a deeply moving experience. Uh, may I take my coat off? Yes, but that's all. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. We're all a bit shy to begin with. You'll love the congregation when you get to know them, in the biblical sense, of course. Here, yeah, Mrs. Lucas, is some of our literature, will, which will explain to you our missionary position. <laughs> Ten Commandments of Sensual Communication. Sermons on the Mount and Off. <laughs> Loving your neighbour in 35 different ways. <laughs> well, you are well organised, aren't you? Thank you. That would be my early training with the WVS. <laughs> uh, now, Mrs Lucas, we have a few extremely personal questions which we need to ask you. We have to weed out anyone who's just in it for the sex. Ah, oh, <laughs> well, yes. You would want that, would you? <laughs> Are you separated, Mrs Lucas? Yes. From your husband? <laughs> yes. Wonderful, splendid. We are rather oversubscribed with male members. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, uh, your age? Well, I am over 2,000 years old. <laughs> Shall I just write in your prime? Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, how would you best describe yourself at group sex? Uptight, unwound, uninhibited? Raring to go? Yes, raring to go. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I wouldn't recognise an orgy if it got up and bit me. Oh, really, Mrs Lucas? You are, after all, a media expert on non-sex. Well, yes, I know a man who's an expert on cars, but he only drives one at a time. <laughs> I, mean, I have nothing against group sex as long as I'm not caught in the middle. Well, Brucey, we're apparently wasting our time here. This poor soul obviously doesn't want our help. Oh, surely you don't have to leave. Well, if you change your mind, we shall be having one of our nude tea parties on Friday. If you would care to pop in and get the feel of things. Friday, Friday. I'm sorry, Friday, I always walk a friend's given for them. Brucey, are you coming? In a moment, dear. Well, I shall be waiting just outside. I'm so sorry we couldn't tempt you with a rousing hymn. Hey. <laughs> I don't often do this, Mrs. Lucas, but I could make an exception in your case. If you think it might help, I could offer you my body. <laughs> Thank you so much, but I've just put one out. <laughs> it is just that kind of sexual repression that has made England a land of do-it-yourself fanatics. <laughs> of an orgy, I am not interested. Why not? Oh, is that my long-lost husband? Oh, I'm so glad you found a moment to call. I just thought I'd make sure you weren't missing me. You're not, are you? Um, are you missing me? Well, I can't actually say I am. Ah, well, I, uh, I can't actually say I'm missing you either, then. Then you haven't missed me even a little one. No, Lawrence, I've missed you a lot, damn it. Well, maybe we could, um... Look, if you think you can just walk out of my life without warning and stay away for three long, agonising weeks and then casually ring up and expect me to fall back into your arms, you are absolutely right. <laughs> I didn't live with you all that time for nothing, then. Why did you? I have a weakness for strong women. And I have a very strong attraction. For weak men. Oh, Jane. Oh, Lauren. Look, maybe we could. Um... Yes, yes, I'd love to. Tomorrow night. A bit tied up. With a woman. What sort of sort of woman? <laughs> sort of perfect, I suppose. We met through computer date, you know. Our cards just matched up. Oh, how sweet. You were programmed for one another. Oh, no, no, Jane. There's no need to be jealous. Oh, isn't there, Lauren? Damn, it's the doorbell again. Well, who is it? Somebody on the other side of the door. Oh, well, you better not keep him waiting. Oh, there is no need to be jealous, Lauren. Poof, me jealous, Jane? I've got more crumpet here than a Bexhill tea party. <laughs> oh, go away! All right, all right, I will. No, not you! <laughs> Next time I talk to my husband, I must remember to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Oh, it's you. I thought you said Friday. Nice welcome for a mother. When I come to visit you, it is Friday. Good Shabbos, mother. 
It's nice to see you, Jane. You look terrible. You're hungry? Listen, I've got a little chopped herring. When I say little enough for six, but it'll keep. <laughs> we couldn't be fed. You know, I eat like a bird these days with my life. How can I eat? You're not listening. I'm listening, I'm listening. Good. Well, now, after the chopped herring, yeah. I've got a couple of fish balls. When I say a couple, enough, enough, enough for six, six but it'll keep. <laughs> And myself, I wouldn't touch fish balls. Not after what happened to your, your Auntie Sarah in Bournemouth, you yeah. remember? Move the table, move yes. the table. Of course I remember what happened yeah. to me, Auntie Sarah. You don't sound so very interested, Jane. I'm interested, I'm interested. But anyway, after the fish balls, I've got a fabulous piece of gatto. Oh, you should put it in the freezer because it's defrosting, so it'll be all right. And I met this man, and when you we finish the fish balls, <laughs> the gatto will be perfect. What, what man? Man? Who mentioned man? You did. Oh, the man I mentioned. Oh, it's nothing. Not worth talking about. Has Lawrence? Mother! What man have you met? Don't get so excited. As it happens, a very nice man. A proper gentleman. He was driving my minicab over here. And? And uh, he passed a remark. Mother, will you please tell me what happened? There's nothing to tell. Eat. I'm eating, I'm eating. <laughs> His name's Leslie Kaufman. He's yeah. 53, looks 40. He's a minicab driver, as I said. It's his own car. He's comfortable. I gave him one of the fish balls. <laughs> <laughs> he belongs to the same club as your Uncle Harry. You know, the one with the funny handshake? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> he wants to bring to drive on Wednesday. And? Oh, Mother, please say you're going to go. Please. I told him to ring me. Oh, good. I gave him your number. <laughs> what? Why am I? I want you to hear his voice, Jane. I want you to tell me if you think he sounds respectable and not a dirty-minded lowlife you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Which reminds me, how's Lawrence? <laughs> oh, well, I, th I think I probably do still love my wife. A cockroach with, a, with an IQ of minus two could have told you that. Sometimes you act like a 12-year-old. You said 10 last week. Is this progress? <laughs> Why do you ask me if you should go back to your wife? Does your wife love you? Who knows? Do you love your wife? It's hard to say. For you, Dada would be hard to say. Can't you make your mind up about anything? Yes and no. <laughs> you infuriate me. Go on, go home to your wife. She probably won't even notice your back. So if I do go out with Mr. Kaufman, what guarantee do I have that he'll behave like a gentleman? Yes. I mean, will a minicab driver respect a respectable widow? Yes. Would you like this fishball in your face? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're still thinking about that lump Lawrence, aren't Lawrence you? Lawrence who? I'll tell you what, darling. I know what'll make you feel better. It's in the kitchen. I'll just go and put some whipped cream on it and I'll bring it in. You wait. <laughs> If you can guess who this is, you can go to bed with me. Oh, my God. That's near enough. <laughs> oh, Jane. You're a feast for sore eyes. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> Gorge <Caught> yourself. <laughs> You mean that husband of yours that's caused me so much heartache? Is he in the room? Oh, isn't it nice having a man in the house again? I look around the room, I don't see a man. I smell a rat. <laughs> Jane, darling, come and eat your ice cream before it gets cold. <laughs> There's some cheese in the kitchen for your friend. <laughs> Thank you.
Teaching, 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 teaching.